Donc nous reprenons. Ok, thank you for your patience. So we're back to the Fragrance uh, Technology Conference 5. Again, welcome back. So, if you took a look at the agenda, the program, the name is FSDL Revealed to Internet Developers. FSDL is the language we're going to be talking about today. We're going to have a number of interactive presentations on this subject. So, to talk about FSDL, We thought it made sense to have one of the uh, creators of uh, the FSDL language, Mr. Alexi Tamas. Once again, the Frogans technology and the Frogans project started back in 1999, um, back then in a small in a small startup, and it continued to grow and develop up to 2012 with the creation of OP3FT. OP3FT is the organization which develops Frogos technology today. Again, it's uh, for the for the uh, for the interest of everyone. It is a non-for-profit between 2012 and 2014. If you've attended uh, previous conferences, uh, a lot of the a lot of the information was uh, on uh, um, Frogos addresses with the uh, well-known asterisk which uh, Philip mentioned earlier uh, there is the the TLD dot fragrance fragrance as well which is used today to secure our uh, servers at OP3FT as well as the FCR operator which is the entity which is technically and uh, commercially responsible for fragrance um, and um, But the do domain name get.fragrance, we can today uh, allow the, the downloading of uh, the fragrance player around the world. But we'll come back to that. For the time being, let's talk about FSDL, Fragrance Slide Description Language. It's the description language that can be used for uh, publishing and for the development of fragrance sites. Alexi, you are the co-creator of, uh, of, of this language and uh, we're going to be talking today about the third release of FSDL. So, in a nutshell, what is FSDL? What, what is the FSDL language? Bonjour, uh, Jean -Emmanuel. Uh, Good afternoon, Jean-Emmanuel. First of all, As Philip said, FSDL is part of Frogrance technology. It's a component of Frogrance technology. So FSDL uh, can be used by uh, Frogrance uh, site creator, cre uh, creators, uh, designers, content uh, creators to, uh, to in order to create their content. So it's the visible part of uh, Frogans technology. There are a lot of other components that exist. You've just mentioned a few. This one is probably the one that will be the most widely used directly by developers. So it is a description language. It's Frogans slide description language. So It's going. It uses tags to describe what's what what you want to, what you want in in the content. What's important is the word language. Um, FSDL was designed in order to be very easy, very simple to use uh, for uh, developers, graphic designers, all people involved with creative work um, can use it. So, fragrance slide description. And um, it's, uh, it's very simple, which means no need for real um, uh, programming language. FSDL is not an actual programming language. It's, it's not used for source codes. For example, you don't write instructions that are then um, interpreted and executed um, uh, according to specific rules. It's simply a description language of what you want to display on uh, on your screen. So this is a major evolution. It's really a, a conscious decision we've made when we created a language. Again, we wanted something to uh, to protect the language and something that could be used massively in all terminals. 
d'instruction, de script, de programme. So, so no transportation of scripts or, 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 or complex instructions. In other technologies, publishing technologies, or web publishing, for example, the scripts can, you know, cause uh, security issues, um, uh, you know, can cause, uh, you know, can privacy issues, uh, leaks, and so on. So the purpose here is to, uh, you know, get very quick adoption. So you just talked about security, privacy. Um, we're, we're also going to be talking about the capabilities of, uh, from a creative standpoint, uh, of uh, FSDL. FSDL, once again, is a component of uh, Frogan's technology. Therefore, it, uh, it's available on uh, the Frogan's site. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take. Um, we're going to take a look at it, uh, and uh, and we we will experiment, uh, play with it a little bit to see what uh, it can actually do. So let me just uh, sit down here. Uh, this is uh, a standard workstation. It's not a fake one. Uh, it's not a mock-up. So let me just open my uh, browser and. Um, can could you please display my screen? And I'm just going to run you through this. So this is my computer. It's using, this is, a, um, it's based on Windows, Windows uh, operating system. So, just uh, keep going. Uh, we're going to adjust the sound of your microphone. Maybe we can take it a little closer. Um, should be fine, should be fine. Alors, voilà. ça c'est le site web. De... Okay, so this is the Frogans technology site. Absolutely, the Frogans.org. So this is the website. So everything that you're going to do now, people can do. Uh, absolutely, provided they have it and they're, they're connected to the web. So whether you're here or whether uh, anywhere else, you can use. You can do exactly the same thing. So here is a video. I'm not going to play this video, of course. I think we've uh, actually played it before. Uh, and let me go right here to the uh, specifications. So right now we're seeing you. So this, this shows that we're not making this up. We're not cheating. Uh, this shows that uh, on the screen, you're, what we see on the screen is what you have in your computer. So we have the technical specifications here. We have the FSDL technical specification and the... Uh, I'm going to click on the FSDL page. Here it is. And uh, if you scroll down, you will find some historical versions, the one that were used uh, in, to create the... Uh, FSDL language, and you can see that we have 2.1, and the current version is, is 3, and a lot of time went by, a lot of years went by. And these years were used to uh, develop, um, you know, a very sophisticated language. So, historical version, does that mean they're no longer available? Absolutely. Yes, that's what it, that's what it means. These uh, versions were uh, available in the early days of the, pro the Frogrance project. We did some proof of concepts with these, simply to show that it was working on a sample of uh, a limited sample of computers. You know, we had an end-to-end -end application. So yes, you're right. These historical versions are no longer used. They're obsolete. So, FSDL 3.0, this is the so-called preliminary version, which is available right now. And looking right below the uh, FSDL 3.0 header, we have some interesting bullet points. Right here, we have the elements and uh, attributes, elements and attributes. Again, this is a description language, which is, which is using uh, XML. 
which in introduces the idea of elements and attributes. So you can you can look at these, and then we have the technical specifications, the official technical specifications. We'll take a look at that in uh, in a moment, and this shows you what in what format the technical standard is uh, distributed to the community. Um, one question: Why do we have uh, extracts and? Why is it just a summary or a recap of the uh, technical specification? Well, I'll, I can show you. Uh, the recap is right here. Okay, so this is a document which includes, uh, as you can see here in its table of contents, it contains all the FSDL components. Okay, and, and they have, they're surrounded by tags. Right, so and what you have here is a summary of the specification. It tells you what the attributes are and what their functions are. Okay, so you, um, the specification, um, this is shorter than the actual specification. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're using e e IETF uh, uh, sta standards, which is the uh, the group that does internet protocols and standards. Absolutely, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, the IFAP uh, standard has already been published. This is the original format, and this I've shown before. Uh, what's uh, the benefit of this document is that it's very thorough. The uh, the font is the same, the same, no color, no images. It's very wordy, uh, fairly dense, and uh, again, uh, this is a very in-depth description. So that's the whole point of having the full set of specifications. If you decide to implement this, you want to make sure everybody get, does do the same thing. So here, for example, you have an example. So the size of uh, the image resource, for example. So we have to define the, 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 the format. We have, uh, as you can see, absolutely everything is uh, is described in a very detailed way. Here are some examples. But again, the most important part is the text here. So OP3FT's job is to, you know, make this format available. For users, however, this is uh, the summarized version, and with this document, uh, this document is fairly usable. Once again, OP3FT évidemment très favorablement dans l'écosystème des utilisateurs qui vont partir de ces éléments là pour réaliser is encouraging to user, users to use this information for, you know, along with tutorials, uh, regardless of their model, well, they, whether they do it in a free way, whether they share, um, with or without training, and so on. But this information represents your resources and production. Okay. So you are actually going to present FSDL but you're not competing with teachers, trainers, they will create their own perfect recipe or whatever they want to do with it. They will, they will have to invent how they want to use it. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. As um, as we said before, OP3FT's job is this: it's to come up with a set of very detailed speci detailed spe specifications. Um, so that's our job. OP3FT gives provides a technical environment, with uh, you know, including a language which has been developed with users, but. Uh, OP3FT, at OP3FT we're not site designers, we're not graphic designers. Our job is to develop an infrastructure for it, our users. And um, 
fallait commencer à présenter des choses très créatives. Et en fait, notre imagination n'était pas aussi débordante que celle des gens à qui on s'adressait. Donc, y compris aujourd'hui, on va vous. Even today, we're going to show you the language. Um, it's going to be fairly technical. It's important for you to understand the language. Um, again, we're not here to make you dream uh, about anything. That's really the job of designers, developers, who will then use it and make something, you know, potentially very exciting with it. In previous conferences, we've already uh, seen how creative some developers are. And uh, it is amazing to see that uh, they, um, how, how much creativity some people have. And, and, and it's really not our business. Um, we are simply here to show how it works. FSDL, vous avez parlé OK, FSDL, you talked about elements and attributes. You said that FSDL is a simple language. Is that because uh, the number of elements is um, fairly limited? Yeah, absolutely. Let me show you this. I think this um, summarizes this. Wow. You just said you, 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 you were not super creative. Uh, oh yeah, but with this stuff you can do amazing things, believe me. Okay, so for those of you who are with us uh, via internet, what you're seeing on the top right here is uh, it's a sheet of paper. This is an A4 sheet of paper with uh, a number of words. So these are the FSDL 3.0 elements. That's it. Okay, let, let, let's show them one more time. So, as you can see, it all fits on an A4 sheet. That's it. Nothing hidden. That's it. And with this, you can create Frogan's sites. So, I don't know if you want me to go through a quick overview of these. Um, do we have time for this? Well, FSDL 3.0. Um, does FSDL 3.0 have all these elements as we're speaking? Well, FSDL 3.0 has two categories, uh, two element categories. It has these elements that are on the left side, these are graphic. And then on the right side, it has some additional elements that are used for browsing and to, make, and to make your browsing more dynamic. So today we're going to focus on the graphic part, which is the left part of uh, this uh, document. So this is, these, are the, uh, this, these are the words that, that are used to create pages, Frogon's pages. Uh, what's on the right side, is, again, is, is the dynamic part of the site. So, you know, the browsing, the browsing experience. Sites that respond to, to you know, that once a field is filled out, you know, if, it's, if there is input, for example. Um, but it's, uh, what's on the right side is not as rich as what's on the left side. De réaliser la partie visible. Again, what's on the left side is really what's used to create the visible part of the site. And this dynamic, these dynamic uh, components uh, on the, or elements on the right side are, uh, you know, fairly standard. No big surprises. All this is fairly well known. Okay, let me just rephrase this. What you're saying is that today we're going to be talking about FSDL designing, how to design a Frogan's site using FSDL um, 3.0, right? Absolutely. Well, okay, let's, um, let's do it. Before, um, before we continue, could you tell us a little bit about the philosophy behind a Frogan's site? Um, again, I think it would be a helpful reminder. Some people are um, probably very familiar uh, with websites, how to create a website. I think, um, in essence, it's the same thing. You have uh, different tags that are, you know, in, in put in uh, one after the other, um, HTML, using HTML language, and uh, 
d'autres langages de mise en forme ou de langage dynamique, on arrive à faire... With other languages, dynamic languages, you can, you know, create a website, which, and, and again, I'm not an IT historian, but... Um, petit-fils du livre, hein, finalement. On met ensemble des it, éléments. It's, um, it's like bringing graphing components together, including text, visuals. It's like creating a book. Uh, today, it's even, uh, it even includes video. And uh, today, you can, you can create sites that are more, more like an uh, encyclopedia. Um, with FSDL, it's a little different. Could you tell us about it? Sure. The purpose of FSDL Tout va bien Oui, apparemment. Alors on reprend. Euh, donc le, tout réside dans le FSDL dans FSDL is uh, the idea behind FSDL. FSDL par l'auteur, l'auteur du... Is du that uh, whoever creates an FSDL document... Face à un, un, puisse développer au fur et à mesure de son can, travail... Uh, de pouvoir avoir une, une approche très naturelle en fait de you know have a very natural approach of what they're trying to create uh, the, the, the program site they're trying to design so <coughs> as you're about to see it's very simple on the left side of this screen we have resources dans le cadre de son de la réalisation de son site resources, resources available to create um, et donc on voit que a site or a page uh, of a site de ressources possibles so different resources available for example une image une sorte d'image image a type of image with pixels des formes géométriques a path alors geometric shapes as draw so res Res sends, stands for what? Resource. So we have res image, which is an image resource. Okay, and along with this, with the res, we have a set font, which has, of course, something to do with the text, which will appear on the site. So, You're building this into your slide, and this, these elements will then be used in layers. Uh, these layers make up what will be your uh, programs slide. So you're literally piling up layers. You can place layers one on top of another, and eventually this is going to give you your final Frogan's site. So with these layers, some layers can actually be built in uh, something a little different. It's called a button, as you can see here. And with a button, you're, uh, you will actually be able to browse within um, uh, the site of the slide, or it could take you to another Frogan's site or it could take you to a web page or whatever online uh, resource so it's once again extremely basic you prepare resources and you then use them as uh, layers that come on top of each other and some have uh, used buttons to be more interactive And this is a specific resource called ResMatch to match the resources that you've prepared, to match them together, to present them to a layer later on, so that you get uh, a layering effect to stack up resources on one on top of the other. Okay, enriching layers. So we have a set of elements here, filters, relief, shadows, to enrich the layer presented on the Frogan site. And that's it. These are the graphic elements. And when we use them in a document, then you'll see it's all very simple because all you need to do is to define the parameters, place them, and you get immediate output. So let me say a few words about this part here at the top right of my graph, which is the file element. 
The file element is the connection point of the page that you are editing, so the connection with the server which is hosting the site. So if I want to navigate from one slide to the next, the button element is going to refer to a file element which is going to describe the place, the location, or the parameters that need to be addressed to the network in order to get the next slide. File will also be used in order to retrieve an image file from the uh, server on which the Frogan site is hosted. So file is a way to provide a resource which is not the FSDL document, but it's a way to give it an identifier to retrieve it easily in this uh, description of the slide. Yeah, and typically, to make the code clear, in such situations, we very often have uh, dynamic queries uh, problems which makes your life more complicated because between static development, graphic development and dynamic development there are many uh, interweaving and it's very difficult to work out. But here you can isolate all the communication issues in one part of your document so that things are much simpler and work can be shared if you have uh, a complex site, you can have the uh, graphic artist working on one side and the developer organizing dynamic navigation working on another on, on his own. Okay, so we've got resources, we place them in layers. If we need uh, other resources, we use a file element. If we want to merge, we have res merge. If we ha want text, we have res text. All this seems to be quite easy once you've said it. But the best is probably to test it. Yes, maybe there is something that we need to say with regards to the Frogan site, and that's about the uh, storage of these uh, sites. And let's remember two things about the designing of a Frogan site. A Frogan site, if you take a look, let me draw something. So if I publish a Frogan site on the internet. I have a Frogan's address. So I want to publish my Frogan site. I have a Frogan address so that users can reach the Frogan site, can access the Frogan site. And what's, what is it going to be like from a technical perspective? So that's a server. And in a directory you have the Frogan site. The Frogan site is comprised of a set of slides. These are the different pages in the Frogan uh, site. And you have different documents here in the Frogan site that make up the different pages of the uh, site. And quite typically, these are these uh, documents which are used using the FSDL language and syntax. And this directory has a name which is important, we'll talk about it many times, and this is what we call the Frogan's site root directory. I'm not going to bother with you with too many names, but this one is important. That's the directory that includes, or that contains my entire Frogan's site being developed. And I can also have other elements in my Frogan site root directory. This is where I can find images, image files and other resources which are then going to be <coughs> used for the Frogan site. So from a structural perspective that's quite important because when you develop a Frogan site, you produce uh, several FSDL documents, because these are documents, so you edit many documents that are linked to one another or which call for images which are in this directory. So that's important in order to understand all the operations that will come afterwards. And each FSDL document 
when they are retrieved to be displayed on the user's screen. It gives us a slogan, a uh, frogan slide on the screen, which can have just any shape, which can be interactive, and which can lead to other slides from the same frogan site. So that's the important in terms of structure. Another thing you need to keep in mind, especially when we'll start talking about the file element, is that to include images or create links to other Frogan sites, you can stay within the Frogan site root directory. So when a Frogan site offers content to a user, all the content are going to come from this Frogan site root directory. So the Frogan's player, this piece of software that the end user will be using, will know that all contents which is displayed on his screen do come from the publisher. Whereas on the web, when you open a web page, you have no guarantee as to the origin of the data and very often you end up with bits and pieces of pages coming from a bit everywhere. Here in Frogans, there is a change in the way publishing is organized because it's the publisher that um, monitors the content. Okay, it's all the more important when, as Philip said, when Frogan size sites are of limited or limited in size. They're small. So you said an FSDL document is a document, and how does this limited size reflect in the FSDL language? Yeah, you're touching upon a second important thing. So first important thing was the Frogan site root directory. And the second is the Frogan site rendering canvas. I'm going to draw a sketch for you very quickly. So when you design a Frogan site, the designer is going to represent two things. He's going to say, well, a Frogan site is small, so it needs to be very agile on the user's screen. And depending on the display scale, we'll have different representations. And the important idea is that in a Frogan's slide, you would not have just one, but you'd have two representations of the page. Two representations, one will be the lead representation, that's the main one, the one in which you interact. And the second one will be the vignette representation. And these will be presented to the to what the user wants. So if he wants to have a very small frog inside at the bottom of a screen, I think you all understand that we'll be using the vignette version of the Frogan slide. But if he wants to have the Frogan slide on his screen and interact with it, then it w it's the lead version that's going to be displayed. And this representation, depending on the uh, display scale, will be defined by the Frogan side publisher and it's going to be an attribute called leap out. That's going to be adjusted. And this leap out attribute will be part of the layer element, as you can all guess. So, you have two representations for the same Frogan's page, the major idea when you have the content at the top of your screen, you still want it to be uh, easy to read. So there is a repositioning of the uh, major elements in the slides so that even in small size it can be useful. In former uh, Frogan's technology conferences, we, we had demos with um, designers who uh, made demos of this leap out 
option that make it possible to have relevant information available, even if the Frogan site is very small. So having two versions, does it mean twice as much work for the publisher? No, not really, because when we designed the language, the FSDL language, we made sure that it would be very simple to get these two versions without extra effort. And this is when we have the second key concept, the Frogan site rendering canvas. That's the uh, canvas for the rendering of the Frogan site that helps positioning the different layers in both representations. And by design, we'll see that these two canvases on which we work will have exactly the same size when you actually design the site. So quite typically, in order to position the elements on these two canvases, we use the same system of coordinates. So we have 480 and 640. And well, you see that they have the same definition, the same coordinates. So one element that I place here, if I put a circle here on my rendering canvas using the rest draw element, it can coexist on both representations and I don't have to write twice as many instructions. And the fact that these two representations are not displayed at the same scale, because some are in large dimensions, others are in small dimensions, that doesn't make any difference uh, in, with regards to design. Okay, so this canvas has pixels. Uh, does it have any other features? Those uh, interested in the graphic aspects, well, these pixels have three components in color, red, blue, and green. So we have 16 million colors because each component has is on 8 bits uh, um, and they provide uh, transparent information. So on 8 bytes, so you have a rendering with a layer of transparency which is variable over 256 levels so that you get a very interesting rendering and effects, and so that you can obtain Frogan sites which are not rectangular in size, because to uh, create a Frogan site which is rectangular in size, you have to decide it. Otherwise, you addition uh, layers which uh, will not necessarily end up in a rectangular shape. So these are square pixels, pixels which are expressed with three color components, one transparency component and an alpha layer, to use other words. And what else? So, you draw on this canvas, but you can stack up the elements. Yes, the canvas is what's visible, but you can position. On the canvas, and if you want to have just half a circle, you could position it elsewhere, and you can have it. You could have it uh, ending outside the canvas. So you have an addressable area which is outside the canvas, so that you can uh, have things coming to the side, to the top, etc. So this coordinate space, you can have things in negative as well. Très bien, donc. Okay, so an FSDL document that describes a Frogan site which can have two representations, one lead version and a vignette version. How do you move from one to the other when you're a user, for those who've seen it? 
Uh, well, we'll see that later. It's totally automatic. Depending on the setting of the site and the size on the screen, uh, uh, Frogan's player will automatically move from one representation to the other uh, in a streamlined fashion. And there is no hiccup whatsoever. It's seamless. You have a seamless representation. So quite typically, you could have, you could decide in this representation. Just imagine this is the lead representation, and that's the vignette representation, okay, that I'm currently designing. Here, I can decide and include a text. Lead is the one that appears when the Frogan site is displayed full size on the screen, okay? And I can decide and have some text here that has many characters because it's going to be displayed uh, in large size on the screen. But in the vignette here, when the Frogan site is in small size, I just have a few words that are displayed in large letters so that when the site is redimensioned, I can see clearly these two or three words in large letters. Whereas if I don't have this adaptation, my user will no longer be able to read what's written on the site in the lead version. But we'll see it through an example. It's going to be easier to understand.